My name is Nigel Linden, and I'm going to give you a very brief tour today of our testing technology training classes. I know you're very busy, so I'm going to keep this as quick as possible. This whole presentation lasts about 10 minutes. This class is designed to cover all of the different aspects of using servo hydraulic testing technology, primarily in the automotive product development process, although it does apply to other products also. The first question we ask in the class is why do we test? It's important before we embark on an expensive testing project to really understand the reason for doing the test in the first place and also what type of test makes the most sense given the point we're at in the product development process. In this section we also talk about the customers of the test lab or the test requesters. What are their needs and how can we best meet their expectations? Next we take a step back and look at the end users so that we can fully understand the usage of the product in the field. As digital technology becomes more advanced, so does the use of virtual prototyping. It's much less expensive to perform design iterations on the computer than it is to build physical prototypes. And so we talk about how the test lab can become a vital player in the virtual prototyping process. Next we talk about failure modes and we move into a comprehensive study of fatigue theory, all the way from load life through strain life, uh, Neuber and so forth through to multi-axial fatigue and life prediction techniques. Then we turn our attention to the various components of a servo hydraulic system, actuators, pumps, servo valves and so forth, and we break them apart and look at the internal componentry and talk about what aspects of component design is important and when you would use different designs for different applications. Once we have a complete understanding of all the various different types of components in a servo hydraulic system and when we would use them, we then get into the equations that are used for deciding on what sizes you need. Designing fixturing for test systems presents its own unique set of challenges. Of course, there's the obvious things such as keeping moving mass low and stiffness high. But then there are many other things that are less obvious, little traps that people fall into, and we'll point those out so that you don't make the same mistakes. Next we talk about components that are off the shelf that make your life easier and we also talk about chambers such as environmental, acoustic and anechoic. Through the years various standard systems have become popular for testing components, structures and assemblies and we'll talk about those systems for testing everything from drive shafts all the way through to a full 6 degree of freedom road simulator. And we'll talk about their applications and make the student familiar with terms such as buzz, squeak, rattle, ride comfort, durability, and so on. At this point, we leave the hardware behind and we start talking about the control system. We will take a PIDF loop and break it down into its constituent parts and talk about why we have each part of the loop and how we adjust the parameters and what effects they have. We will discuss all of the various test programming techniques in use today from block profiles, peak valley time, matrix regeneration, simple sinusoid, random vibration control and so on. And we'll talk about where each of these are used. With modern digital controllers we now have a vast array of different optimization techniques and the options available are quite overwhelming. We will look at each technique and break it apart and explain how they work and demystify them so that you can pick the right technique for the test you want to run. At this point in the class we go back to the theory again so that we can learn some basic concepts that will be used later. We start with a simple single degree of freedom system and work our way through to a distributed parameter infinite degree of freedom system. Then we move into digital signal processing and learn about the Fourier transform and sampling theory and so forth. Now don't worry while we do have plenty of math in the class, I also provide the option for the students to be able to skip around it if they're really intimidated by the math and don't want to get into the details. The auto spectral density is of course such an important tool in the test engineer's toolbox that we spend some time talking about how to measure it and how to interpret it. We cover the theory behind and the application of strain gauges for building load cells. We cover accelerometers and LVDTs. And then we take a system such as a vehicle suspension and we apply transducers to it as a case study to talk about what works and what doesn't work. And we do that with several different applications. Next we covered field data acquisition techniques including editing and analyzing the data and all the various methods of looking at the information in the amplitude domain, the time domain and the frequency domain. And of course we leverage what we learned earlier in the fatigue section so that we can do fatigue based editing. 
Now we have most of the foundation in place to start learning about time history simulation methods and we're going to go into iterative techniques and we start off with the frequency response function and learn about all the different methods of measuring it and all the different methods of analyzing it and how you deal with nonlinearities and what their effects are. Now we take much of what we've learned and move into real-time history simulation or iterative simulation. And we talk about all the different pitfalls it can fall into, including things like singularities. And we talk about the various tools that are available for analyzing those pitfalls and getting through them. And we do go into the more modern techniques such as singular value decomposition and uh, frequency response function iteration. The last section focuses on the area where people will spend most of their time, and that's actually running the test. And we cover monitoring the quality of the test, reporting, data archival, and the most important part, generating the final report for the customer or test requester. It is difficult for me to show you everything that we cover in the class, but I think you'll agree that this is the most comprehensive class that exists for server hydraulic testing technology. Now, the class can be taken in three different ways. One of the ways is to take the class online, which means the students can work from home or they can work from work and they don't need a very fast connection. They can use just a simple modem line if they so desire. And the class is split into 10 sections. They have to complete each section and answer a series of questions before they can move on to the next. They're able to review the section while they're working on the questions. And it takes about 20 to 30 hours for a student to work through the class on their own. And the online class is completely narrated and they also have the ability to contact me at any time if they're having any problems, if they find a concept difficult to understand and it's not well enough explained for them. They can pick up the phone or they can drop me an email and I will give them some private instruction to help them through. The second option I call a web live learning option. And I'm using an online service. At the moment it's WebEx. The students can take a module at a time. The whole class is broken into 12 modules, and the students can pick and choose which ones they want to take. And if you have a lab with a lot of students, you can buy credits, and you can assign the credits to each student, and then they sign up for the modules that they want to take. This is more of a live environment. They would have to take the class at specific times, and the classes are repeated every month, and they would log on at the specific time, and they would pick up the phone and dial a centralized number, and we would talk to each other through the telephone, and they would be able to take the class on the computer screen. This gives the advantage of the students being able to interact with others as they take the class. And the third option is that I can actually come out and teach the class live directly to your students. And in that case, I would tailor the class to meet your specific needs and only cover the applications that are important to you. I would bring all the materials with me to your facility, and then we can go down into your lab, usually in the afternoons, and have practical sessions on your own equipment. Take this class to gain a fundamental understanding of all aspects of server hydraulic testing for automotive development. You can take the class to understand things to look out for when you're purchasing equipment and software, and you can discover what is important and what isn't. You can learn how to design and build your own test systems, and probably the most importantly of all, you can improve your efficiency by providing timely information to those who need it while completely leveraging the assets in your lab. And anyone who is involved with testing from senior technicians all the way through to equipment suppliers can get something out of this course. There's a lot more information on these training classes than I have presented here, but it depends on which package you're interested in. If you're interested in the online self-paced class, we have an outline, we have pricing information and frequently asked questions. And then if you feel as though you have everything you need, you can simply sign up directly on the site. We take either credit cards or purchase orders. If you're interested in the web live learning modules, these are 12 modules that you can take online through the WebEx conferencing system. If you're interested in the outlines of each of the modules, or you're interested in the schedule that we have set up for each of the modules, you can click here. You can also get pricing information and get your frequently asked questions answered. And when you're ready, you can buy course credits online also with a credit card or with a purchase order. 
If you're interested in having me come out and teach the training class at your site, you need to contact me and we can discuss the different options that are available. And so if you click on this link, it will simply bring up an email screen for you to send me an email about that. If you want to know more about me and whether I'm qualified to teach the class, you can click on this link and there's a bio. And if you have any questions at all that have not been well answered by either this presentation or the materials on the site, please give me a call or send me an email. Thank you.